Over the last few months, we've seen an explosion of interest in generative AI, largely due to the popularization of ChatGPT released in November of last year. Now, of course, it's obvious why people are really interested in it. You can do a lot of really cool things that we could not have even dreamed of doing just five years ago. Uh, we can do things from the more silly and mundane, like writing a silly poem, to uh, doing something that's more useful for a business context, like generating uh, code for software engineering. Naturally, companies are assessing their own business strategies now to see how they can make use of this technology for the core value of their own respective businesses. And to that end, I think the real value of generative AI is going to come in the form of building custom use applications, whether that be a user interface or some sort of backend uh, process that's going on behind the scenes. Now to that end, I'm going to talk about two specific use cases today of something that I built, uh, two little UI applications. Uh, but before we jump into those, I want to talk about the tech stack that I'm going to be using to build these. The first piece of this is obviously the OpenAI API. I don't necessarily need to use the OpenAI API, but because it is very simple to use and very similar to the chat GPT interface you are already in familiar with, uh, we're going to make use of that in this video. The second concept is what is known as LangChain. LangChain is one ver popular variant of a, a concept known as auto GPT. And that is this idea where you take a set of tasks and you feed in an input. And then after each task, the output is fed into the next set of inputs so that you have this chain effect going on of getting the outputs into the inputs and then creating this whole process. And you'll see how we are going to use that in our second use case. And finally, in order to enable the UI elements of this project, we are going to be using Gradio. Gradio is an open source Python library created by Hugging Face, which is a company, open source company, no, largely known for their natural language processing offerings. And you'll see how we can very very easily write a nice little UI application for each of these respective use cases. Okay, so our first use case is a chatbot very similar to the interface that you are familiar with in the form of ChatGPT already. <clears throat> the difference with this one is that I am running this on my local machine. This user interface you're looking at here is uh, served out by Gradio, as we mentioned before. And you will notice specifically here that I've already asked a couple questions and then I specifically have my chatbot here uh, answering the questions in the form of Jar Jar Binks from Star Wars, just because I thought it was funny. But the, the goal here is just to show you that you can do custom things just like this. And not only that, the more important one that companies may be really interested in is the capability of protecting your own data. So one of the rules that I built into my chatbot here is that if I put in something that looks like a social security number here, it will catch the social security number and it will not go out to the API. So let me go ahead and give you a demonstration of that. So I'm going to type, I have the social uh, security number one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four. I know I'm not supposed to be submitting this, but here we are. And now that we've gone ahead and submitted that, you can see that Jar Jar is telling us that our prompt contains sensitive information and that it will not allow us to post this out to the OpenAI API. Now, this is really great because as you know, specifically with OpenAI, they keep your data for 30 days. So if you are a company who is really, really concerned about protecting your data, you may want to opt for a user interface like this as opposed to allowing the vanilla chat GPT user interface. So that way you can catch these bits of information and not have them go out to a source in which you do not want your data uh, stored there. Our second use case here is where we involve LangChain. So what LangChain is going to do here is what I call a business profiler tool. So if you put in a high profile company name here off on the left chat, and then you press enter, it is going to do a number of things on your behalf. So the first one is obviously going to just be displaying the company name, uh, the top five competitors. That's pretty uh, benign. But where it starts to get really interesting is where we start to get into the top five business strategies and then the top five actions to support the first recommended business strategy. So what LangChain is doing behind the scenes here is it is asking the a OpenAI API to generate the top five business strategies. And then it's taking those strategies and piping them into the next 
part of Langchain, which is then taking the business actions to support the first recommended business strategy. So for example, if it said the first business strategy should be that you need to build up your digital marketing campaign, it would say in the top five business actions that the way you might do that would be to uh, start a, uh, a Twitter campaign or an ad campaign on Twitter or uh, having some sort of, uh, you know, app or website or something like that. Additionally, you can see also what it is also going to be doing behind the scenes. It is is that it is going to grab the full text uh, of the Wikipedia entry about the company and summarize it into a single paragraph or two. And then just for fun, again, we are going to translate that same output and show how Jar Jar Banks might dictate that. And then there are a couple other things too. But the whole idea here is you can see how when you use Langchain with OpenAPI, you can start to do some really cool things. So just for fun, I'm going to type in Apple, the company Apple, uh, the one who makes computers, iPhones, whatnot. Now this is gonna take a second. So let's pause here and I'll restart when this finishes in just a minute. Okay, at right about the one minute mark, our uh, profiler finished. So this is what our results were. So again, we put in Apple and here are the top five competitors. It notes Samsung, Microsoft, Huawei, Sony and LG, I, I think that sounds right. And like I was noting here, so what the first business strategy is to expand the product line. Let's look down here. So looking at the first strategy, so the first strategy being of the expanding of the product line, you can see that ChatGPT has recommended these five specific actions in order to further that strategy. So, so that includes you know, increasing research and development, uh, introducing new products, expanding into new markets, investing in marketing, things like that. As we scroll on down, so you can see that we got the company history here. So again, this was using Wikipedia's entry and then summarizing that appropriately into a single paragraph here to actually uh, demonstrate the Apple history. And then we take this exact same output and put it back in through OpenAI with Langchain to see how Jar Jar Binks might dictate that. And then we get a little bit of a humorous kind of thing here. Now I did a couple of other fun things down here too. So I asked if you could, if uh, OpenAI could write a jingle uh, specifically for Apple. And here's the fun little jingle that it wrote, uh, complete with choruses, verses, and everything. And then finally, if we scroll down to the bottom, this is a little bit difficult to see, but what this here is, is actually an HTML code block that if we wanted to take the same output here, all we'd have to do is copy and paste this code. But the idea here is that you can even generate code this way. And this was all just off of typing one or two single little words here right uh, from this user interface. And when I click clear results, we are back to a clean screen ready for the next one. So I hope that gives you a sense of some of the cool things you can really do with generative AI if you do a little bit of customization. Now, the one thing that I also want to indicate here is you might be surprised to enable both of these use cases, it took me about five hours of coding work. And the five part of the five hours was simply just learning Gradio. If you asked me to do this again, I could probably do this in much quicker, maybe even an hour. So it's not as if it takes a long time to even get up and going. Of course, we demonstrated a user interface here, but you could imagine how we might use the same Langchain or OpenAI uh, technologies or even some other provider, whether that be uh, Google Bard or one of Hugging Face's own models or uh, AWS Bedrock, all these different options you could bake into a uh, holistic system to produce similar results to what I did in my use cases here. So I hope you found that really interesting. I think it's really cool. I'm really excited about the future of business and to see what people are going to come out with. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you again for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed making it and uh, writing this whole code. Um, and we will see you in the next video.